still living with his parents. They were married. Simon had a job at the Glaciers now. Eric had given him a full-time position after he left school. And then... Seventeen, both working at the glaciers. No, everyone loved Simon. He's a glazier who doesn't have much money. I, mean, I don't know. I don't know. Suicide? No. I mean, he would never do anything like that. He is not the kind of person to do anything like that. I mean, to hurt himself? No. <laughs> yeah, I guess. I mean, I'm quite a private person and I didn't want to get into the detail of the argument. No! You're talking to the wrong person if you think I'm some kind of slut. If you think I'm the kind of person that would have had sex with all those guys. <sighs> this other person doesn't exist. I don't know what the blonde wig is, but it could be anything. Have you looked at the cat flap? Day, Saturday. I slept for a few hours in the car. And when I woke up, I came straight back. Uh, Simon wasn't returning my calls and I wanted to try and make up. I got back to the house and Simon wasn't there. And I. Oh, me. Is there a bin? Simon. I love him so much. No. 
I mean, he was, everyone loves Simon. He was so nice to everyone. He loves me. Cute. You must love them very much. What ages are they? You want me to play something? Well, I'm not the world's greatest guitar player. Okay? Probably need some tuning. No. It's okay. How about a traditional ballad? It should be right up your street. enough coffee for today, thanks. Glass of water. So I moved out, got a small bed set, got my tattoo to mark the occasion. I was singing in a bar in the evenings, so I had some money, enough money to cover my rent. And I've been doing something similar ever since. 
haven't put down any roots. I don't exist. Are you sure? What would you be doing in Oxford if there was no conference? I remember calling him. He said it was boring and he spent most of the time at the bar. He saw me singing one of my shows. Pure chance. Not sure I remember what he was even doing there. Afterwards, I had a drink at the bar and he came over and we got talking. I knew who he was. Obviously I knew who he was. But he didn't know who I was. He was fascinated by the likeness. He guessed my name from letter two. <laughs> Told me it was a palindrome, right? That would impress me. I enjoyed talking to him. It was amazing to be able to sit and interact and talk to him after all this time. He didn't tell me he was married. I'm not sure what he was thinking. He later told me it was like he was dreaming. A waking dream. I told her it was one of my boyfriends, someone I had met in the bar. I think she was happy. But I could tell she was thinking, why couldn't it happen to her and Simon? They were the ones with the real life. Why not them? Oh, my tattoo. <laughs> I got it to express my individuality. It's an apple and a snake. gone to bed feeling ill, thinking it was flu or something. The neighbour called me, I had to use my key to let them in. We found them dead in their bed. And they'd been there for days, no one had noticed. Just awful. 
It was so soon after my miscarriage, in the worst year of my life, and I've been so happy to get married, and after that, it was just like, fuck. I guess you could call it that, but we were both, both happy to get married. It was a beautiful wedding. <laughs> we had our first dance to come back and stay. I'm not sure if that's a good wedding song, but I loved it. I chose it. I mean, it was genuinely our first dance. We'd never danced together before. It was probably awful to watch, but I enjoyed it. It felt like it was just me and Simon for that moment. Just the two of us. Good, happy. I mean, ups and downs like any couple, I guess, but we've been married for over 10 years. 